I'm proud to say that this video is 100% sponsorship free, so I don't receive any money, any free stuff, or any discounts on products or services from any of the brands or manufacturers that feature on the videos. In addition, the views that I articulate in these videos are entirely that of my own. So nobody vets what I say or gives me guidance of what I should and should not say about the bikes prior to going live. Right, welcome back everyone. So today we're going to be doing the full review of the Keyway 302C. And as I mentioned in the sort of teaser video, it's a bike I actually like the look of. I like the idea of it being a small capacity V-twin. I thought, yeah, this is something I'd actually want to ride. So we've started out today at Worcester's NTP multi-storey car park of all places. And I haven't chosen this location just to make the view worse because obviously normally we like to have sort of rolling fields and glorious countryside. Today we've got a kind of red brick building, loads of concrete and some nice grey overcast skies. But I've done this on purpose because I think that the Keyway is a bike that's going to be well suited to urban use and the people who are going to be watching this video might be using this bike around town, whether they're commuting, zipping through traffic, whether they're going to get a coffee. It's, it's got that definite use case. It's got the style. It looks like it belongs in the urban environment. So that's why we're here today. So I have actually started my testing on the bike. I've ridden it around the town. And what you're looking for with town riding is basically it's a bike that's easy to ride. It goes into gears. Uh, easy to put your feet down at junctions and red lights, got enough power to zip through traffic. And I, I can confirm already that it is a nice urban bike. What we can do with it, uh, let's just hop on. Obviously look at my feet, I've got 690 millimeter seat height. So whenever you stop on this bike, um, there's no worry about it being unstable or anything like that. Also the weight's down low, isn't it? Because it's a cruiser. So one of the easiest bikes you could pick to commute on. Um, obviously there is a lack of storage uh, unless you were to get something at aftermarket so that is a problem if you want to put like a laptop or something you'd have to wear a backpack um, but other than that it's uh, a very easy bike to, to ride around town on think about filtering because you need a bike that is uh, sort of small and well proportioned to zip through traffic and the key way even though it's kind of got a muscular and squat appearance it actually proportionally is quite a small bike. We're talking about 167 kilos wet weight, which is nothing um, in, the, in this day and age. And the bike itself proportionally is quite narrow. So if you want to cut through traffic, uh, you know, filter through two lanes of stationary traffic, avoiding people's wing mirrors and so on, then you can do it on this bike. Um, the one thing which I find a little bit harder to uh, get to grips with in this kind of environment is the wing mirrors. So this is going to sound a bit silly, but I've never ridden a bike with uh, bar end mirrors in the down orientation. I know it is a styling exercise, but uh, I feel like your arm's there and it kind of covers the view. So you sort of have to move your head to look. If I had this bike, remember this is a demo bike, so I'm not going to fiddle around with it, but I would change these. Left would go to right and right would go to left. They'd be upright and that way I think I'd have all the visibility I need. Um, but other than that, the mirrors are fine. I mean, they do contribute to the overall look of the bike, which is a nice thing. One other thing to mention is the Speedo. Uh, it's the Speedo is the unit from the Yamaha XSR. I mean, it's probably a generic unit. LCD shows miles per hour, the trip that you've done, time, gear indicator, everything you need really. I mean, it's six gears on here, probably only using first, second, third in the town, aren't you? So got everything on. However, it's a little bit uh, m mounted too far back for me. Uh, obviously, you've got the bar here. It's behind the handlebar uh, if you're looking forward. I would probably rather it would be in front of the bar just so you don't have to sort of visibly, uh, you know, look down to see uh, what you're looking at. The good thing about it is, though, that it's uh, symmetrical. So there's nothing worse than a sort of asymmetrical, it sounds silly, doesn't it? Asymmetrical Speedo that's sort of mounted off here. Uh, which unfortunately the Royal Enfield Meteor, the new bikes, because they've dropped the tripper, the Speedo is located off there. The bars are probably the widest bit on the bike and they've got a backward sweep to them. Look really cool and they're not too wide because the bike's proportions are overall small. 
Um, you don't really reach for the bars. I, I, I kind of find that painful when you're reaching to get to the bars. The foot controls, hopefully you can see this, they are, I, I'd say they're mid controls to be honest, because look at the bend in my knee. Um, they're not like right back here, like an interceptor or something, but they are, um, yeah, look at the bend in my knee, it's over 90 degrees. So I'd say they're mid controls. Right, whilst we're talking about the foot controls on the bike, they've added a quite a nifty feature. And it's basically, you've got two um, arms there for the brake and crutch, clutch lever. And you've got uh, a protruding pin that sticks out at the top. And then you've got a cam. And it's very interesting that the uh, actual peg that you use to flip up with your toe, that can rotate on this pin 360 degrees. So think about urban riding. If I'm wearing these boots, like these ones I got on today, uh, or maybe you're wearing something uh, a lot slimmer, or maybe you want the full on big motorcycle boots, there's gonna be quite a discrepancy in the height of the toe. So to have so much adjustability there in the levers, um, breaking uh, the gear lever, it's actually really handy. Because when I got this bike, I, I was struggling to change gear, probably because the person who had it before had big boots. But I just used an Allen key, which is top mounted, easiest thing in the world to do. And then I just swung this round uh, so that the, there was a smaller gap and toe, my toe slotted right in. So that's a really nice uh, point about the bike. Okay, let's talk about a little bit the looks. It has got a very defined cruiser feel to it. Obviously the main feature of the bike is the V-twin. It's a small capacity V-twin. That is shown and displayed for the world to see, which I like, I think it's really cool. This big kind of air filter style thing, I don't know what that actually does, but it looks cool. And you've got 302 there on the side. The exhaust, again, um, you've got the two uh, arms of the exhaust coming from each cylinder head, two downpipes, and then it kind of morphs into this big silencer, which obviously is oversized for what the bike actually needs. But it's all a style exercise, isn't it? It looks really cool. At the back here, you've got um, a 15 inch wheel and a 16 at the front, multiple spokes, very much kind of a Harley feel to it. And then another defining feature is this big fuel tank. Uh, so it's part of the styling of the bike, but <coughs> also very handy because it holds 15 liters of fuel. I don't know how far you could ride this bike on a single tank, but I'm gonna guess it's probably 220 miles, something like that, maybe more. Uh, the other cool thing, is that the fuel tank opens very easily. I'm actually struggling to open the fuel tank on my bike, but this, no problem at all. Um, so if you're using the bike daily, it's just very, very much a usable uh, part of the bike. Ooh, the one thing which you might struggle with a little bit on day-to-day -day use is the lack of uh, storage space. So if you are commuting on the bike, then there's nowhere easily I can see to mount uh, a pannier or something like that and throw over panniers might you might struggle with a little bit there but it's a style exercise isn't it it's just meant to look cool whilst we're talking about it the switch gear is very defined i mean let, let's just do a click audible click uh if it feels like tactile so you'll be able to feel that the indicators are on or off um, which is quite important when you're zipping through traffic and you've got cars uh, moving around people driving like idiots frankly Another safety feature, you've obviously got LED lights all the way around here, uh, daytime running light, and then you've got a logo inside the headlight. And everybody seems to be doing that these days, and obviously the keyway is no exception. Quite, quite, quite a trendy design there. One cool thing about the tires, I actually noticed this. They have a tread pattern, which is very similar to the Continental. I thought I'd, I'd seen it somewhere before. Very similar to the Continental Sport Contact sport contact two or one one of the early sport contacts and uh i think that's cool uh, obviously the tread is a lot deeper on this it's, it's a cruiser it doesn't need to be super grippy rubber the rubber is actually uh not a brand name that i know but with the kind of riding you're doing and the and the performance output of the bike you don't really need a, a kind of huge uh, grip level you, you can't even lean the bike too much anyway so why would they invest in in kind of premium level tires, it doesn't make any sense.
Okay, so we now moved to probably one of the worst locations I've ever filmed, uh, for audio definitely. I've taken the V cruise up and down the motorway and just to report back that it's actually quite good at motorway um, speeds. So you don't have that much wind blast, which is a plus point. I didn't feel like it was buffeting too much. Obviously it's naked, so there's not that much uh, buffeting from a screen or anything like that. The vibrations are only limited to the foot pegs. So perhaps that's because of the uh, uh, location near to the engine, but there's no vibration through the bars or the mirrors or the seat. The mirrors, it's amazing, they're actually crystal clear, no vibrations at all at motorway speed. So that's a real plus point for the V-Cruise. Obviously you've got six gears on there and the engine's got enough power to do motorway uh, speed and it not feel dangerous. So um, yeah, plus point for the V-Cruise on the motorway. Right everyone, that's a lot nicer isn't it? <laughs> Normal service has been resumed, <clears throat> but my throat is borderline on the way out, so uh, we'll try and press on as best we can. Just take my uh, earplugs out so I'm not shouting at everybody. Right, before I talk about what the bike's like out on the open road, just a quick detour, because I'm going to just mention this jacket. Quite a few people have asked uh, about the jacket. Somebody said, what bell staff jacket is it? This isn't a bell staff jacket at all. This is an Oxford Churchill jacket. I actually bought from an online shop called Ghost Bikes and it cost 40 pounds. So it's quite far from a bell staff jacket. It's Oxford Churchill. It's not available on Ghost Bikes anymore because they were selling it on a deal and that's expired. But if you do want to buy this jacket, uh, just search for Oxford Churchill motorcycle jacket and it will come up. Uh, they do it in black as well and they do it in ladies. Also guys, if you ever want to know what my gear is, just look at the description of the video um, because I, I know quite a few of you ask. Uh, I've unintentionally become stylish. <laughs> I've never been stylish in my life, but people seem to ask about my motorcycle clothing. So this is what this is. Okay, so we've taken the 302 out on the open roads and just to real test the engine, the brakes, the handling, that kind of thing, the comfort. Um, what I'll say is the, there's one word to describe the engine on this bike and it's it's character. It's that v, it's the V-twin, isn't it? Like I knew there'd be something special about it. It's the V-twin. Um, when you turn the bike on, let's just get this bit, uh, let's get this bit over and done with. This is the... Uh... Hear that? I'll lean forward a little bit. Listen to it on tick over. It's just, it's just such a lovely uh, sounding bike and it's the engine that really makes bikes. This bike has got an engine that sort of sets it apart. It's kind of unique in its class being a V-twin small capacity cruiser. Um, so the engine really, really does, uh, is, is, is a peach. The engine's power is 29 horsepower, just under 30 horsepower, I think. So if you're riding on the open road, um, it'll, it'll do 70, it'll do low 80s actually, but just for these kind of A and B roads, it's happy sort of at 60 miles an hour with traffic. If you find yourself in fifth and then you come into a bend or you find yourself coming up a hill and you've slowed right down, it's got the torque just to sort of chug along and pull you up uh, or pull you around the bend. I, I found that just coming on these roads here. So. The engine is great, um, six speed, as I mentioned before, goes into gear very easily. The, the, the kind of changing gear is a, is a light, uh, kind of effortless operation. When we look at the suspension, um, it's non-adjustable front and rear, uh, upside down forks. I think it's quite firm, but then I really like super soft suspension on bikes. I kind of want to be floating along really. It's quite firm suspension, but it's very well damped. So at the, at the back, if you're pressing on a bit over, over potholes and everything, it stabilizes straight away. So it's not sort of pogoing on the, on the rear springs. 
Um, so I think the damping is spot on. Let's talk about the brakes as well. I think it's 240 at the back and 300 at the front. Uh, they're perfectly adequate. The front brake's quite uh, quite sharp actually, quite a lot of, uh, of power to it. It's branded, it's branded Bender. It's perfect, it's fine, isn't it? It's just like the tires, it suits the application. Okay, it's not Brembo or anything like that, but it does, does what it's meant to do. The front brake has surprisingly got quite a lot of punch. Levers are non-adjustable, um, but they are big and chunky. And again, that's a kind of stylistic decision. It kind of suits the, the overall feeling of the bike. Right, the eagle-eyed amongst you might have noticed that I have actually swapped the mirrors round. Um, I feel like it was a little bit of a safety issue, so I have uh, taken the liberty of swapping the mirrors round. One thing I noticed is that there's actually two little rubber sleeves that uh, shroud the bolt that locates the mirror. And that might be partly responsible for the absolute total absence of vibration through the mirrors. Um, so whoever designed that system, such a, such a cost-effective and um, basically simple innovation, but they've been able to reduce uh, any vibration at all through the mirrors because there's a little rubber insert here. Okay, so let's have a look at the fit and finish of the bike. Obviously, the keyway is built to a price. It's £4,800. But I'm happy to report that the whole thing comes together as quite a nice package. There's not too much plastic on the bike. It all seems to be chunky pieces of metal, which uh, fits in with the theme. So obviously you've got a little bit of plastic here, but even that looks uh, sort of quite industrial with the big bolts, uh, plastic here. But then the rest of it is uh, big chunky metal um, components. So it doesn't look too plasticky or you know, low quality. It looks really good up close and also from a distance when it's riding by and you see it, it looks great. Um, I did say I'd make a comparison with this bike to Harley Davidson. I talked about the sports though, it shares some looks, but if you've also think about the Harley Davidson Nightster, the fit and finish on this is better than the Nightster. And I don't say that lightly at all. Um, I've ridden the Nightster and if you look at the size of the Nightster, set that car go past. There's, there's plastic bits everywhere, exposed wiring and red and black wires, all sorts of stuff. This bike actually has less of that than the Harley Davidson Nightster. Minimal plastic, no nasty exposed wires, um, no bits and bobs that don't look nice. And the Nightster is 2023 prices, 14,000. This is under five grand. So it's, uh, it's amazing what you can get now and, and how the bikes that are more entry level have, have really come, come along uh, leaps and bounds in quality. All right, well, I've just stopped. And just to wrap up and give a summary of the 302. Well, interestingly, I've just popped into Midwest Moto to have a chat with the guys in there. And when I pulled up, both the dealer principal and the head sales guy came out and had a look at this bike. And we all were walking around it thinking, uh, uh, you know, like giving our opinion and having a chat. Basically, three guys just sort of shooting the breeze about the bike. And they both said how nice a bike it was and how well put together it is and that's something really interesting because you've got two people who are in the industry selling bikes they've seen all manner of bikes very informed opinions and they both said how nice it was and uh, that was kind of nice confirmation of my own view of the bike which is it is really well put together um, it's it's a lovely it's a lovely machine and it's got such character as well with the v-twin engine it's it's just a really nice, uh, I think it's got a high quality fit and finish. The engine's full of character and it just enables you to ride and enjoy riding. The bike obviously isn't super fast because it's, uh, you're under 300 cc's, 298 cc's, but it's for that kind of enjoyable ride where you're just taking in the sights and the smells and just seeing everything that's out in the environment from uh, the, the kind of perch of being on a bike. And uh, I think it's brilliant. I, I, I've really enjoyed my time with the 302. And I think good on them for making quite a unique bike. The bike itself costs 4,800, which 
under five grand is quite an accessible price point. If you think about it, you could pay 300 quid down and pay 100 quid a month. Uh, and that's the kind of like level of investment if you were going to buy this bike on, on a financing deal. It's, it's nothing, is it? It's crazy. Uh, and for that, you, you're just going to have a really nice time. If I had to pick out any negatives, which is actually quite hard because the bike is very well put together, but I suppose the levers are non-adjustable. That's an issue. Pillion perch is probably quite small. <laughs> right. <laughs> that was a very awkward jump cut. Let's actually stand back a bit so we're in the frame. <laughs> we awkwardly jump cut from the previous segment in the video because I forgot some stuff. Susie's back, as you can see and loads of people were asking about the pillion seat position but uh, first of all, as you're here do you want to... S well, actually, let's just introduce we needed somebody for this job with a particularly large bottom so perhaps you might be the lady <laughs> perhaps you might be suitable for this task but first, actually, why don't you sit on the bike itself because how tall are you, Susie? 5 foot 3 5 foot 3, look, and Susie can get her feet down so but actually, with shoes on I'm not flat footed, but look, I'm on like the ball of your foot, aren't the ball you? of my foot, but lower. That's like nothing. I'm a little bit leaned forward though, so I have to have handlebar extenders. I prefer to be either upright or leaning right forward. All right, let's try on the pillion seat then. This is something that people asked about: was what's it like for a pillion? So I'll get on. Uh, just drop your pegs down, yeah. How is it? <laughs> Small. Well, as you, I'm sure they can see and you can't. Yeah. My bum is actually kind of overhanging the seat a little bit. Okay. So I am on the seat. Yeah. I'm on the pillion seat. Yeah. What, what you have to do, hug very tightly to stop yourself. Yeah. Which I like. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, it's okay. It's, it's not super soft. I have a very sensitive derriere. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's not really any room for me to do my jiggling about, which I do. So, obviously, you have to be careful as a pillion not to be moving around too much. But I do do a bit more of, like, leaning back. So, on the Vosges before, I would lean right back sometimes on the box to give mm. Sean a bit of space. Um, but, as you can see here, do I've leaned back a bit and now I'm off the seat almost. Yeah, okay. So, what would you give it out of 10 for a pillion seat? Oh, gosh. Um, n not so great. I don't know, like a like a five or a six. Five or six. There you go. So that's the pillion seat question. Another question I had was about the comfort and engine character compared to the Royal Enfield Meteor 350. Comfort, I actually think, is better because it's a smaller bike. Mm. Proportionally, you're not reaching at all. Um, if you are like two wheeled Willy and you're six foot four, then it'd be too small a bike probably because he'll yeah. be crammed on this. But I think for me, it's, it's perfect in comfort. Engine character, the Meteor does have a characterful engine being single, but mm -hmm. this is a V-twin and we both like the kind of yeah. the burble yeah. Um, yeah. that it comes across. I really like it. The other comparison where it fav it's favorable against the Meteor 350 is its weight. The Meteor's 206 kilos, something like that. Mm -hmm. This is 167. Okay. So if we're moving around. Wow. Yeah. And I think I can feel that. Yeah. So often I feel totally overwhelmed by most bikes, which isn't really a very nice place to be. I really want to do my full license and uh, I feel like there's not that much option for me to not feel for, like for height and weight, height, yeah. breadth, weight, everything. Yeah. Just I feel like a tiny little, well, I'm a small person, tiny little person, yeah. but I feel that on bikes. And I think that that's like, obviously they, there's not much they can do about that. I mean, there must be some things, but this feels like everything's compact, so it's lower down, and that makes it way more manageable. Um, and I can feel the weight difference for sure. Like, like I say, most of them just feel totally overwhelming. This feels like okay, I could actually handle this. Yeah, I think this um, would be a cool little bike yeah. for somebody. Yeah. All right. Well, now we'll probably jump back into the main video. So, should we just do a little jump out to the front? <laughs> to see you later. Okay. What? and there's not that much storage space on the bike or anywhere to put your luggage or anything like that but oh and the clocks which i mentioned uh, i kind of prefer them up front rather than mounted behind the bars but that's just i'm, I'm picking it at, at straws really it is a really really nice machine and good good on the on keyway for doing it what i will say as well 
in reference to the sticker on the side of the engine casing. It says in big font, made in China, and we were all just back at Midwest. Uh, we were all looking at, uh, at, at this sticker and we were thinking, why would they put such a big sticker? I mean, you can't miss it. You can see it from like 10 feet away, made in China on the side. And I think it's like the company is saying, yes, this bike is made in China and we're proud of it. Look at, look at what we've created. And uh, they should actually be proud of it. It's a really great bike and I've enjoyed my time with it. What I will say is also thanks to MotoGB, I am probably more... I am more. I am one of the more honest reviewers out there. Some of my videos I haven't held back on, and so the fact they were able to kind of trust me to take the bike out and give it a good going over, um, yeah, thanks to them. That was a nice, nice gesture. I've had the bike for a longer period of time this time round, and that actually helps me a lot because I don't have to sort of ride a bike for an hour kind of panic and put together some thoughts very quickly. I've had time to sort of let things sink in and. and produce a more informed uh, view of the bike and try and articulate it a bit better to you guys. So I'll stop the video there. If you do have any comments about the little keyway, then definitely write them down in the comment section. If you've got any questions, then jot them down. But uh, until next time, guys, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.